Welcome back everyone to yet another super special episode and indeed super special because we continue our pursuit for high-end shoemaking by reviewing a pair of derbies from Norman Villalta. Coming up! How's it going my friends? Welcome back after a short hiatus. And I hope you stayed hydrated because uh, there's a heat wave all over the world right now. And things are about to get hotter. Because like I said in the intro, we'll be discussing a very special pair of shoes from Norman Villalta, who I've uh, had in the works for quite some time now. And it's finally here and I'm super excited to bring it to you. Uh, so in specific, we're going to take a look at like a derby. Uh, wingtip derby, you could say, uh, in a nice dark brown hand-painted color, uh, which is a made-to-order that I made uh, like two or three months ago and it just arrived last week. And finally, I managed to sit down and make a video about it. Uh, before we go into the close-up where we're going to discuss everything from, you know, build quality, uh, feelings and fit and availability and all the good stuff, I want to briefly talk about uh, Norman himself and how pretty much I ended up having these shoes, which for transparency's sake is a review pair, but I paid for it. So, uh, for those that don't really know about it, I had three people that influenced my career into shoemaking and becoming a shoe seller and soon a shoemaker. One of them was Jesper from Shoegazing, uh, who inspired me to make my own blog and talk about shoes and learn more about shoes. The other one was Justin Fitzpatrick, whose journey to learn about shoes and become a shoemaker and make his own line in the end was another inspiration. And the third one that I don't really mention often is Norman Villalta, today's review brand and person. And I say this because he was a bit like me. I was an engineer. He was, uh, you know, he studied law and he wanted to make a difference in the world. And he had this romantic view of the world and nature and wanted to bring justice and help people uh, in his native Argentina. But I think it was about his 30s, just like me. And he decided, it's not going to work. Uh, I want to work with shoes. So he moved to Italy and at a later age in life. And he studied under Stefano Bemmer, the legendary Stefano Bemmer, not just the school. And now he's one of the finest bespoke shoemakers in the world. And he also has, as you can see, uh, some form of ready-to-wear and made-to-order line in small batches made in Spain in, in his workshop in Barcelona, which I really recommend you visit. Uh, he's also a really nice person, and I first met him in the London Trunk Show in 2019, uh, which I do have an article if you want to read, and I'll leave it down in the comments. So, after fostering some kind of relationship with them and keeping in touch for, you know, the last two years, I said it was time for me to try and also help them, but also see what all the hype is about. And as you will see, these are really damn good shoes. So before we get into the close-up, expect a made-to-order like this to go around 1,220 euros or, what is it, $1,400 or something, and subtract 350 or 400 uh, for the non-made-to-order pairs, so ready-to-wear. Bespoke is another story and requires another video. So as I said, uh, we're gonna have a nice close-up, we're gonna talk about the amazing box, the unboxing experience, and all of the dedication, the passion, and the unique designs uh, that and elements that are incorporated in each uh, design and style of Norman. So let's get cracking. All right, my friends, let's begin. And we're going to start with the box, which is quite large, as you can see. It barely fits the screen. It has a really nice navy blue color to it with some golden, you know, frames. And of course, it's branded. And this is, first of all, it's quite modern. As you can see, the letters, the tonality of the brand, like, is quite sharp and modern, but staying classic. And you can see it by the edges of the box as well, which is also very sharp and coincides with the tonality of the brand. And this particular box, uh, it reminds me, of course, of something like, you know, the sea and Barcelona and all this kind of stuff. And it is so 
you know, sharp around the edges that it reminds me of if you had an iPhone 4 or 5 with all those, you know, those very sharp uh, edges, it will remind you exactly of that. There is nothing else here and there other than branding, but your keen eyed, you might notice here at the corner uh, the model and the size of the shoe handwritten, and here in the other corner you will see a very small transparent sticker, which is the company that makes the packaging. Enough with that though. The box, by the way, is really nice, really solid, and it's very big, and probably too big for the shoes, but I think that they use the same size to fit boots as well. So, of course, tissue paper inside, and, well, your shoes. There are two shoe bags, which seem to be cotton on the outside, uh, of course branded and in the same color palette. And they're very, very high quality and actually quite heavy. And inside, you can see this beautiful, so soft, velvetish texture, and it's gonna protect your shoes and it just feels so good. You can see, two of them. There is also a pair of, you know, spare shoelaces, which is always a nice touch. Some uh, bubble wrap, you know, to keep everything nice and steady. And I think here, yeah, I have a nice small email that I exchanged that I had uh, with uh, Scott from Norman's team. And he just printed it out and thanking me for everything. So a nice touch. So that's about it. Uh, nothing extra special. And uh, let's move on. And I say move on because this is why we're here. I mean, just look at them. The first thing you will notice when you take them out is first of all how low profile and what an amazing shape and design they have. Second, you are gonna notice the mirror shine that comes with them on the front and at the back. You can see how much it shines, it's phenomenal. The only problem that, uh, well, if you can call it a problem, was that during transport, one at the back cracked a little, so, you know, it has a bit of webbing, and to their credit, they, they said, ship them back and we will fix it for you, and of course, I declined, because it's such a small trivial matter, and I didn't even expect a shoe shine like this. And uh, actually, if you run your finger, you know, on the top, and afterwards on the uppers, or the rest of the uppers, you can see the difference and how much of a great layer of wax exists here. It's like, almost like, like polished, patented leather. And here you can feel the individual pores and everything. It's phenomenal. And after this settles down and you're like, hmm, great shoes. I mean, why not talk about what they actually are? So of course, as you can see, this is a derby. So you can see it by the open lacing system here, instead of the closed of the Oxfords. And it has some very unique features already because this is a four eyelet derby. Uh, usually you see five and in some different other Gibson designs you see three, sometimes two. But this one has four, so it's already something like, wait a second, that's, it's a little bit different, it's great. I was a bit impartial and uh, you know, skeptical how it's going to, to look, but I, I think actually the proportions are perfect. And I think it comes down to uh, like the, the spacing between everything and the rest of the design and the last. You can see how elegant the shape is. And of course, at the front, you can see there is a wingtip, which regularly goes all the way here with perforations or brogging, call it as you wish. And then the more the unique things continue because at this place here, instead of the traditional wingtip design, you have what you usually see in a Balmoral Oxford, you know, where the stripe rolls all the way to the other side. And here you will see a small V, a small drop at the stitching, which reminds me of the Edward Green Galloway. And at the back, surprise, there is no back seam because it goes all the way to the inside, it's very symmetrical and finishes here. So it leaves a very clean, nice, beautiful back heel. The brogging itself is uh, quite beautiful, it's discreet. Uh, it's overall very well done and very consistent in both shoes that I checked. Uh, the only one that was a little bit different was, for example, I don't know if I can show you, at the back, the middle one, was not exactly the same as the others, but we're talking about like really neat picking if I have to find something to shape. Overall, so uh, sort of like a four eyelet wingtip Balmoral Derby, and the shoes are finished in this 
beautiful hand painted dark brown color with some reddish hues inside, uh, which is called Maron Mediterraneo, uh, or pretty much means Mediterranean brown, and it's phenomenal. It's not the original color that you would find in the in the shop, so I, I specifically requested for a bit of a darker brown color, and I think I love this very very much. It was a great choice, and. The laces are also very good, uh, nice, they, they feel good to the touch and they, they don't feel, you know, like they're gonna break any moment. Uh, I also like the shape, pretty much is a bit of a soft square, uh, very chiseled. I really like it, I couldn't find a specific name for it, but for most of the models that I see in Norman's uh, web shop have such a similar, you know, design. And here is a better look. And you can see the metal toe tip that I asked to be installed, which uh, was another expertly done job. Very flush, perfect. And here is the shape, very nice. And of course, which means you can see also the sole. Uh, the first thing you will notice on the sole is that the waist is not the tightest possible or that we've seen, which really doesn't matter. And it has a really nice uh, purple color, you know, with black stripes all over the shoe, which is actually quite cool. And a uh, stacked heel, uh, leather heel uh, here, very nice, very well polished, very well trimmed as well. Show from this side, very nice, very tight, close welt to the shoe, giving a really nice profile. And that's about it. The fiddleback is very, very small. Uh, overall, the shoes are Goodyear welted. So machine stitched, machine, you know, lasted, machine welted. Uh, but this particular pair was offered to me with a hand-built waist. Uh, there is, uh, you know, there are very few details that you might struggle to notice here, but the keen-eyed individual will notice. For example, here it says NV, which is Norman's name, Norman Vilalta, and some lettering on the left and right, which I'm not sure exactly what it is about, but one of the little things that I noticed and I'm quite proud about is that here, you see this sort of like star-shaped, cross-shaped uh, design that the uh, nails have at the heel. And if you notice here at the facing, it has the exactly same shape. I don't know if that's a coincidence or if it was intentional. In my opinion, nothing is coincidental, but I think it's a really nice touch uh, that, uh, well, I saw myself. Very well, uh, very nice trimmed welt, uh, so tight. Uh, overall, it feels like a very high quality shoe. And of course they come with elastic shoe trees, which as you can see, took me just a second to pull out, which is great. They're very easy to, to put in as well. I will talk about them in a bit. Inside, you get a nice half uh, insole, but there is one unique element. So first of all, the lining is expertly trimmed. It's really nice. But as you can see, it ha hopefully you can see, it has a nice quilted uh, padding at the insole where your foot rests. And that's actually quite cool. I've never seen it before. And I don't have much to say about it yet. I need to try the shoes more, but it is a really little touch and it could offer a bit better cushioning. And that's about it when it comes to the inside of the shoes. Overall, very well built. Uh, the proportions are excellent in my, in my view. Uh, extra mirror shine and all, all the stitching is great. The, the design, the laces, and as you will see the shoe trees, Small elements like the padded insole, very, very nice, very well done. These are going to be excellent shoes. And let's check out the shoe trees. So, shoe trees. Of course, at this, uh, you know, type of money and this type of prices, you should always get, in my opinion, lasted shoe trees, uh, which means that they will fit the shoe exactly. Uh, the shape of the shoe, as you can see here. Very nice, very sharp as well. And I think these are from uh, Beechwood and they have this sort of like off-white, sort of white cream color to them. And they're very high, you know, not exactly, not, not polished or lacquered, but they're very smooth to the touch. And it comes with a handle, so you know, you can grip your shoes easier. And it also comes with a hinge, which I've seen, I think the last time I saw this was on uh, St. Crispin's which, as you will see, is very good. Uh, it has 
three uh, sort of like brass um, screws at the top and other three at the bottom. It's very functional, it's very quiet. And of course, it's also slightly hollowed, as you can see here coming out from the other side. So it does save some weight. Overall, great presentation, great product, great shoes. I'm excited to wear them and let's move on with the conclusions. And that was it. As you can see, this is a very special pair, uh, not only when it comes to the actual design elements, but also the feeling and how it looks and the attention to certain parts and details that, you know, you, you don't think about it much when you consider it, you know, a, a ready to wear pair and it's quite awesome. Overall, it has a very nice feeling of just holding the shoe and just looking at it uh, from every angle, especially the first time I took it out of the box and I just took a random picture with my phone. I was like, wow, this looks good. And that's the thing with uh, Norman, I think, because you can see a lot of elements that he has maybe taken from a, a more, you know, Italian perspective, or like sharp shapes and everything. But there is a distinctive element that he has brought to each shoe and a, a unique design thing, like, you know, his famous uh, Dacon boot. Uh, or, for example, I don't know, this is a four-eyelet derby, which you don't see that often. So uh, the low profile of the shoe as well. And if you spend a lot of time looking mostly at Instagram or pictures of famous shoemakers, you will start to re to understand and, and see visually and understand which shoemaker is behind each picture without looking at the tag. And it's quite distinctive to, uh, to understand after a while, okay, yeah, I know, this is a Norman Villalta shoe. And that says a lot in an industry where everything's just so saturated and almost looks the same. As for the shoes themselves, uh, I think they cater to a very specific type of person uh, because, first of all, I mean, they cost quite a bit. Uh, so you are at the high-end segment, especially if you go to made-to-order. And they're still machine-made. I mean, they're quite transparent about it, but this doesn't mean that this is not a good shoe. And my opinion about, you know, machine-made shoes at the high-end is slowly changing. And this one certainly helped me because the attention to everything is phenomenal. And the type of person that will go for a shoe like this is the one that has tried, you know, most of the famous brands out there, or like, you know, the mainstream brands out there, and wants something different, or the type of person that knows exactly what they want, or doesn't know at all. Like the person that will go into a dealership and want to buy a supercar, and what are the usual options? You're going to buy what? A Ferrari, a Lamborghini, a McLaren, or a Porsche? No, this type of customer wants something with a little bit more fizz. So they're gonna go and get a Pagani Zonda, a Noble M600 or something like this. And uh, that's what I like the most. It has character and the people that buy this have character. I'd like to think that I'm one of them actually. <laughs> I really like this model. I think you can see it in my face. Uh, I'm really excited to put it into use uh, this week, hopefully tomorrow. And before we do that though, I mean, you see the shoe, it's amazing, it looks great, it feels great, uh, the mirror shine is amazing. The only issue I would say I have is that it smells a little more chemical than I'm used to, and that's maybe because I've been using pure polish products uh, to clean my shoes and shine them, so they have a better smell, uh, a bit more orange. But in any case, uh, the most important thing is fit. First, you see the shoe, you love the shoe, but if it doesn't fit your foot, it's pretty much worthless. Believe me, every time the shoe will win. After discussing my sizing, which is usually a UK 8 or a US 9D for, you know, general regular fit lasts, I discussed with Scott, who have been, you know, emailing about the fit and the sizing, and he recommended that for this particular shoe at least, I should probably take a UK 8, so my regular size. And I would say that it is quite correct. So when I put it on, which is quite easy, especially with the four eyelets, the fit is pretty good. Um, because it's a derby, it's quite easy to put your foot in and also quite easy to lace and, you know, strap and, and lace tightly. But you can also adjust it so your instep 
will not you know suffer as much as an Oxford. It has a little more way to give. And because I have a little higher instep, it's, it's, it's still snug, but it's still comfortable. So those of you with a medium instep uh, will be absolutely fine. And I was worrying a bit at the beginning well, because of the low profile of the shoe, but no problem at all. And the same goes at the sides of the shoe. Uh, it's, uh, its shape is um, sort of like, you know, the type of fit you will get from a soft square or a bit narrower shoe. And sometimes you might get some pinching, uh, like I got in my Passus uh, review when I tried the UK8 one, and I need to have a size up. This one is uh, borderline snug, it's, it's not bothering me, but uh, it's worth mentioning that if you have a wide foot, or a wider foot, and you suffer from some pinching, you might benefit from sizing half a size up, or just making a made-to-order and ordering a, you know, an adjustment or like a wider width. Uh, same thing at the front, I have just enough space for my toes, which I can move them a little bit around. And actually there is no heel slip when I'm wearing proper dress socks. So overall this is a very good fit and uh, I really look forward to seeing how they will break in. But I don't expect major issues. So my advice to you is to, if you have a regular foot, Take your usual UK size or size that's on one full size from your, say, US Allen Edmonds size. And of course, always just send them an email, uh, talk to them on Instagram or give them a call and just ask for advice so you make sure. For me, pretty standard fit and overall very, very good shoe. For availability, I would say that apart from their website, which is the main hub really, and they have all their ready to wear, made to order, and group made to orders, which sometimes end up being cheaper. Uh, it's uh, the main hub where you would go to order your normal Villalta shoes. And uh, there are a few collaborations that they do, and uh, a few retailers that you can find here and there. For example, there is The Hand, uh, which is, I think, in the Netherlands, and you can find some collaborations with uh, Le Fot in uh, New York City. So. There are a few options with some, you know, special models, etc. But the main channel will be directly through Norman. And that's about it. I almost don't want to wear them because I don't want to... I just don't want to ruin the mirror shine and I just, they're a work of art. They're a bit like the Stefano Bemers I have. They're definitely something different and unique, but at the same time it feels familiar. Um, so it's like taking a classic design and putting a little twist on it, and I really like it. Um, also, the sole finishing is also great. Uh, it might not be everyone's taste for those of you that yeah, expect, you know, those really, really tight waists and everything, but I, I stopped caring. The, the shoe feels like a work of art, and if you are looking for something around the thousand, one thousand four hundred dollar mark, uh, this is uh, this is a pretty good shoe. Uh, I think this is a this is a keeper, and I really encourage you to at least follow Norman and check out his work. And if you are in Barcelona, visit the workshop and commission something because his bespoke seems to be also top notch. So that's it for the whole video, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you're new to the channel or if you just like it, please subscribe, leave a thumbs up, press the notification bell. And just leave a comment and uh, talk to me. Tell me what you think about this and uh, if there is any model that, you know, has picked your interest or that you would personally try. I I'd love to hear that. And of course, give me some feedback about the video itself. And I'll see you in the next one. But before you go, I'll always have a really bad dad joke of the week. So why don't ants get sick? Because they have antibodies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I can't laugh too much because it's too warm in here. So, my friends, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Mm.